All right, Jeff, thank you very much for accepting our invite. It really means a lot to us. Um, I know you are very busy. I really appreciate your time, and your presence is definitely going to inspire the young generation who is hearing right now. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. And yeah. good morning to you, and good evening to me. Good evening, Jeff. Um, now, let me start with the introduction. Now, Jeff Dean, as you all know, is the chief scientist of Google, the pioneering AI researcher. You know, the, all the technologies you see around, like MapReduce, Spanner, TensorFlow, Gemini, he's the mastermind behind all this. He inspires us a lot at Google, which keeps us pushing towards the frontiers of AI every day. Uh, now, Jeff, um, so this, one, this is our fifth version of this conference. And the theme for this conference is Generative AI Now. What next? Uh, you have seen how the generative AI has evolved over the years, like the before machine learning, machine learning, deep learning, LLMs. Um, so I have a question for you. How do you think this generative AI space, this landscape, is going to evolve over the years? And how do we prepare for that? Like, how? Do, what are the things we should do? What are the things we should not do? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously the the field is progressing quite quickly. I think if you look back, you know, say five years or ten years, you know, the kinds of things that our models today can do kind of were, you know, people were always aspirationally trying to to work towards those things, but it was a little unclear exactly when we would sort of uh, make enough progress to be able to reach the current capabilities. But at the same time, we also kind of have aspirations of what we'd like these models to do that they kind of can't quite do today. So I'll just like highlight a few areas of progression I think are interesting. So one is, you know, moving from more text oriented models to generally multimodal models that can accept, you know, text or code or audio data or images or video data kind of seamlessly deal with all those different kinds of modalities or even interleaved versions of those. Um, I think that's a, that's a pretty important trend and that those models, our models will continue to get better at that kind of uh, input. And you already see on the generative side, being able to sort of generate, you know, not just text or code, but also images and audio and you know video generation is a little bit behind what we can do in terms of like the fidelity and accuracy and quality of say image generation but it's like making pretty rapid progress as well um i think being able to generate sort of quite long form uh you know, videos that are kind of coherently uh, consistent both at the small time scale and the large time scale is something that you know will advance pretty rapidly um so I'm pretty excited. And then I would also say the the sort of inherent capabilities of these models is in progressing, but is not really where we want them to be. Today, you can kind of ask the model to do something kind of complicated, uh, and it maybe can break a complex thing down into five or six subtasks and maybe sometimes put all those subtasks together reliably and be able to sort of accomplish something that might require five steps of kind of logical thought. Uh, and it can maybe do that 60 or 70% of the time. And if you ask nicely a different way, maybe it'll do it even if it didn't do it the first time. But I think what we want to get to is a system where you can uh, ask the system a very high level thing. And that might require breaking that problem or task down into kind of 50 steps or stages and have it very reliably complete each of those so that you can do a 50 step thing with 80% reliability. That would be transformatively different than the models we have today, which can kind of do five things with 60 or 70% reliability. So that's kind of what lots of people in the field are working towards is how do we improve the robustness and reasoning and you know planning capabilities of, of these models and make them able to do even more impressive things than what we can do today. Great answer. Definitely, multimodal, long context, and how can we get rid of get rid of this prompting without prompting the model? How can we do? How can the model break down to complex decomposition, do high level planning, all kinds of reasoning tasks? Yeah, this is definitely the future. All right, I have the second question for you. You know, Jeff, you are an inspiration to many 
the researchers and engineers like me. Uh, several watching you online right now, and many will be watching it when you upload this video to YouTube later on. So what advice would you like to offer to them? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you should try to find things that you're really excited about. I think anytime you're you're thinking about what to work on, you know, you will you will have more success if you're really truly invested and really care about, you know, uh, achieving a good outcome for whatever sort of problem you've decided to tackle or problem you decided to take on. Um, so I, I, I think that's one major piece of advice. Uh, a second that I've uh, used reasonably successfully throughout my career is to kind of figure out how to put yourself in a position where you're working with other people who know things that you don't, right? I think often you can find problem areas where, and potential collaborators where, you know, none of you individually have the whole set of skills that you need to tackle some interesting problem or, you know, a piece of software you're trying to build or a research problem you're trying to, to solve, but collectively, you do have the skills. And I think in doing that, in working in, in a setting where your skills are somewhat different and, and uh, complementary to those of others, you often end up uh, with some of your skills kind of rubbing off on other people and some of their skills rubbing off on you. And so then you, you know, hopefully accomplish whatever it is you're trying to do, but you also then even if you then stop working together because you're off working on something else, some of what you've learned rubs off on them and some of what they've, they've learned rubs off on you. And you, you now have a broader set of tools and skills to go about tackling your next, uh, you know, the next problem you're going to work on in your career. Definitely. Like finding the right collaborator that's complementary to your skills and, you know, be excited about the problems that you've been working on are super crucial. Uh, now, Jeff, I'm sure others will agree with me. It's a true honor to have heard from you at this platform. I'm sure this will inspire a lot of young generation uh, to better leverage the power of generative AI and be successful in their life. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. And enjoy the rest of your event. I, I'm very excited and honored you had me, uh, had me join you. Oh. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff.